we are going to discuss regarding one of the most interesting and important topic that is vermiform appendix as continuation to the cecum. In last video of cecum, we had already discussed regarding how uh, appendix arises from the cecal bud. So this is the blind sac cecum and here comes the ileocecal valve and uh, from here only our appendix will arise. So let's see the exact position of appendix. So this appendix usually looks like a worm. So it arises in the posteromedial aspect. So you just imagine that the appendix is arising from the posterior wall of the cecum and it is arising like this. So you can see it is appearing like a worm and it arises from the posterior medial aspect of the cecal valve and uh, it is almost 2 cm below the ileocecal valve. Okay. So if we are talking regarding the exact quadrant where our vermiform appendix gets located. So in the last video itself we had seen where the cecum is getting located. So it is present mainly in the right iliac fossa. So this is our appendix present over here. Let's see regarding the length and diameter of appendix. Length and diameter. So here the length of the appendix is varying from 2 to 20 centimeter and on average it is 9 centimeter and in case of diameter it is 5 centimeter in diameter. So here in case of length of the appendix it is longer in children age group than in adults. So we all know that the base of the appendix is fixed to the posteromedial aspect of the cecal wall and this tip is very free and it appears in any direction. So based on this there are a lot of uh, position of appendix. So now let us see regarding the position of appendix based upon the direction indicated by the tip of appendix. So here so here, in this first position, the uh, appendix usually goes upwards and right. So you can imagine like uh, here uh, only the appendix arises, we know that. And if it is going towards the right and upward direction, and this is the exact position of the appendix. So it is going towards the right and upward. So it is also called as paracolic position or 11 o'clock position. All these positions are mentioned in terms of clock that we will see at last after seeing all the different positions of the appendix. And the second type. So here the appendix lies behind the cecum or colon. So we all know here it is arising and if it is lying behind the cecum and colon it appears like this. So with the position itself we can name it. It is called as retro cecal appendix and it is exactly in 12 o'clock position. You can see if watch timing is like this then it is 12 o'clock. And the most important thing related to this retro cecal appendix is this is the most common type of appendix we can see in people. So next the appendix usually moves towards the left and upward direction but here if the appendix is moving moving in front of the ilium it is called preilial type and if it is moving behind the ilium then it is called as post ileal variety and here the timing position is exactly 2 o'clock for both 2 o'clock positioning so here the appendix is moving upwards and left if it is Behind it is posterior and if it is in front of ileum then it is pre -ileal. So in the next type if it is going horizontal to the left so this is the position of appendix in the next type it is also called as promontric type pro monteric at 3 o'clock position. So this is the positioning of a horizontal placement of appendix. So now if the appendix is descending into the pelvis it is called pelvic position which is also called as 4 o'clock position and this is the second most common variety next to the ileocecal. Last type of appendix. So in this condition if the appendix is point in, pointing towards the mid inguinal point. So this appendix is also called as subsequent or mid inguinal appendix. Which is exactly 6 o'clock positioning. So let's see how these appendix are appearing in the clockwise aspect. Try to imagine like a clock in this. 
so first comes our paracolic position or 11 o'clock 11 o'clock is also called as paracolic and then comes our 12 o'clock position which is another than retro cycle and then comes our 2 o'clock position that is splenic where we can see the pre and post ileal variety post and pre ileal variety and then comes our exact 3 o'clock positioning which is also called as promontric position so once you are remembering this clockwise direction then it would be easy for you to understand and there comes the 4 o'clock position which is also called as pelvic and at last comes the 6 o'clock position which is also called as sub cecal or mid inguinal appendix so the most interesting thing is the most common variety is retro cecal and the second most common variety is pelvic appendix okay so this is one of the important mcq you have to remember this so now let us talk regarding the appendicular orifice. We all know that the appendix arises from the posterior medial aspect of the cecum, which is exactly 2 cm below the iliocecal orifice. And uh, here, this uh, appendicular orifice, where the appendix gets opened into the cecum, that is the exact location here. This opening is guarded by a semi, semi lunar fold of mucous membrane, which is also called as valve of Gerlach. So if we want to locate that exactly in our quadrants, we can see that we all know regarding the different quadrants of abdomen. So, this one is the left lateral plane and this one is right lateral plane and this one trans pyloric plane and this one trans tubercular plane. If we want to exactly indicate where this valve of Kerlach is located in the quadrant, it is exactly 2 cm below the trans tubercular plane over the right lateral plane. This is the exact location or surface anatomy of appendicular orifice. So, other than this, we should know one important thing that is McBurney's point. So, this is the point where we will be getting maximum amount of tenderness in case of appendicitis. So, let me tell you. So, it extends from the anterior superior iliac spine to the umbilicus. So, let's see. Here, the line joining the anterior superior iliac spine and umbilicus. And this line is divided into lateral one-third and medial two-third. So, if we are dividing the line according to that, we will be getting one particular point. That point is called as McBurney's point where we will be getting maximum amount of tenderness in case of appendicitis. So, regarding the lumen of appendix. So, here in case of lumen, it is very small and it may be partially or completely obliterated after the mid-adult life. Now, let us see regarding the peritoneal relations of appendix. So, here we can see the mesentery getting attached to the ileum and uh, to the uh, outer surface of the uh, appendix and the tip of appendix is mainly attached to the triangular fold of peritoneum in this way. This is called as meso appendix or appendix mesentery. So, this is exactly regarding the peritoneal relation. So, here this is the uh, mesentery present over here which is connecting the ileum and this meso appendix is a small triangular fold of peritoneum connecting to the appendix. Let's see regarding the blood supply of appendix. So, the major blood supply of appendix arises from the appendicular artery. Let's see how it is arising. So, this is the superior mesentric artery. From this superior mesentric artery, it gives arises to the iliocolic artery. Iliocolic artery. And this iliocolic artery gives branches to the appendicular artery. So, this is the major blood supply, appendicular artery. And from this iliocolic artery, we have two other branches called posterior cecal and anterior cecal. This one is posterior cecal artery and anterior cecal artery. So, from here arises a branch of accessory appendicular artery, accessory appendicular artery, which is also called as artery of Sisachalam. This is one of the important MCQ. So, let me repeat again. The major supply is through the appendicular artery, which is arising from the iliac artery, iliocolic artery, which is the branch of superior mesentric artery. Then comes uh, the artery, accessory appendicular artery or artery of Sisachalam, which arises from the posterior cecal artery, which is arising from the iliocolic artery. So, this is exactly regarding the blood supply of appendix. So, now regarding the venous drainage. So, venous drainage of this appendix is mainly through appendicular vein 
iliocolic superior mesenteric vein draining into the portal vein. So, this is a, all regarding the venous drainage. So, now regarding the nerve supply of appendix. So, there are two types sympathetic and parasympathetic. So, sympathetic arises from T9 and T10 through the celiac plexus and this is causing the referred pain in umbilicus. So, whenever there is pain in the right iliac fossa because of the same dermatomal origin, we are having the referred pain in umbilicus also. And this parasympathetic supply is through vagus. Now, regarding the lymphatic drainage. So, this is the superior mesenteric artery as we had already talked and there comes the iliocolic artery. And from iliocolic artery, there is anterior cecal artery, then posterior cecal artery. And from that, there arises the branch to appendicular artery. So, this is of the arterial supply which we already know. And here, most of the lymphatics drain directly into the iliocolic that is intermediate lymph nodes present over here. And this lymph nodes directly drain into the terminal lymph nodes present near the superior mesenteric artery. And some may pass indirectly into the appendicular nodes and this is exactly what regarding the lymphatic drainage. So now, at last, talking regarding the histology. See, we, so we all know that the in, inter interior layer is none other than mucosa. Here in case of appendix, we won't be having villi and we will be having only epithelial cells which is exactly present uh, in between the crypts of Liberkin. Then comes our So then comes our submucosal layer. This is the submucosal layer. So here we will be having lot of lymphatic follicles. So just because of the abundance of the lymphatic follicles present over here, it is also called as abdominal tonsil. So then next to the submucosal area, we are having the muscularis layer. So in case of muscularis layer, we are having inner thick circular fibers and outer thin longitudinal fibers and in the outer surface outermost layer it is nothing but the serous layer muscularis one already I had mentioned so this is what exactly regarding the histology of appendix so now so now let's have a quick recap. This vermiform appendix is a worm like diverticulum arising from the posterior medial wall of the cecum and it is 2 cm below the iliocecal wall. And uh, regarding the dimensions, the length is 2 to 20 cm long and uh, the approximation is 9 cm and the diameter is 5 cm. And here the length is more in children than in case of adults. And if we are checking the exact quadrant where our appendix is located, it is in the right iliac fossa. Now uh, let us see regarding the different position of appendix. So, first one is paracolic position which is exactly 11 o'clock position. Here the appendix is moving towards the right and upward direction. Then comes the retrocecal appendix at 12 o'clock position which is the most common variety. And here we can see the appendix behind the colon or cecum. And in the third variety we are having the splenic, uh, splenic type which is moving to upward and left. And in case of this, we are having two subtypes that is pre-ileal and post-ileal. If the appendix is present in front of the uh, ileum, it is pre-ileal and if it is going behind, it is post-ileal and it is 2 o'clock position. And there comes the promontoric position where the appendix goes horizontally left and it is 3 o'clock position. And then next comes the 4 o'clock position which is pelvic, which is going towards the pelvis and this is the second most common position. And then comes the last position of appendix. Here this appendix is pointing towards the mid inguinal point. So, it is called a sub or mid inguinal appendix and it is 6 o'clock position. So, you can easily remember this clock to identify the position of uh, appendix. So, now regarding the appendicular orifice and this opening is guarded by valve of Gerlach which is a semilunar mucosal fold. And uh, now regarding the position of the uh, surface anatomy of valve of Gerlach which is 2 cm below the trans tubercular plane on the right lateral plane. And now let us talk regarding the McBurney's point. The line joining the anterior superior iliac spine to umbilicus is divided into lateral one third and medial two third. And that in that point we will be having maximum amount of tenderness during the appendicitis. So now regarding the blood supply, the major blood supply is through the appendicular artery which is arising from the iliocolic artery and iliocolic artery is the branch of superior mesenteric artery and another one branch which is arising from the posterior cecal artery is also called as accessory appendicular artery or artery of cisachalum and regarding the venous drainage, appendicular vein, iliocolic vein and superior mesenteric vein directly draining into the portal vein.
and regarding the nerve supply sympathetic uh, supply is through t9 and t10 and uh, parasympathetic is through vagus and regarding the lymphatic drainage most of the lymph get freely are uh, directly drained into the iliopolic nodes and uh, some of the lymph drains indirectly into the appendicular nodes and regarding the histology in case of mucosa there is no villi and in case of submucosal area we are having aggregated lymphatic follicles with that's why the appendix is also called as abdominal tonsil and, and thank you so much and keep learning